Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, everybody? My name is El Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today I got another SCP video for you guys, and this is Symptoms. Do you have mercury poisoning? SCP-1903, Jackie's Secret. Not really sure what this SCP is going to be about, but it thumbnail did remind me of, like, a creepypasta I heard about a long time ago with people wearing bunny masks going around and whatnot. So I'm not going to really delay the intro for too long and talk about it, because I... Really just curious about this SCP in general, guys. So, so we could play on this bad boy in three, one, two. Do you want to hear a secret? Yes. Hold on. Before I quench your curiosity, let me remind you that some things are better off left not knowing. Pry around long enough, and you're sure to find something you weren't looking for. That is to say, not every treasure chest is filled with gold coins, elegant yeah, this jewelry, is and expensive relics. Maybe it's not even a treasure chest at all. Dumpsters do look quite similar, don't they? Peek inside and you might find rotting meat and a smell that stings your nostrils. So, do you want to hear a secret now? <laughs> of course you do. No disclaimer could stand in the way of humanity and hot gossip. Look at the world around you. Everything revolves around information. The more we know, sure. the more we can say. And is there anything people want more than something to say? Next time you're at a nice restaurant with a group of friends or coworkers or family, look across from you and notice how hard lips have to refrain from belting out interjecting or adding two cents. Humans can't help but throw their words into the universe, as if they will echo in importance for eternity. Some might say that listening is a skill. However, you can't argue that it is simply a prerequisite to speaking. It is a deal we make, a compromise. If we listen, then we get to speak. If we hear a secret, we get to share it. So we spend our true. lives listening, observing, and gathering information about the people, places, and things around us. Philosophers and scientists like to call it the pursuit of truth. But who are we kidding? It's a chore, a task completed only for the prize that comes with it, the chance to speak about what we've seen, heard, and learned. Most often, this journey of gathering information isn't as profound as we pretend it is. Digging around other people's business is no noble task, but curiosity is like a shiny shovel, and to let a tool like this rust in the shed would be a sin, wouldn't it? Yeah. So with that said, let's stop pretending we don't love TMZ. Let's indulge in our lust for secrets. Let's get digging deep into the mystery of SCP-1903. Like with understanding any artifact, culture, or ideology, we have to first look at the earliest origins of our subject to comprehend yep, there's, the current there it is. state. That's this the money I was talking about. SCP-1903 wasn't always SCP-1903. Once upon a time, she was Jackie. Jackie Barter, a woman who dedicated herself to her job, trying to make a better life for herself. Jackie Barter valued her work above anything else. She did her job and never complained. She showed up early and always smiled. Whether she enjoyed it, however, was another thing. It's hard to know anyone's true feelings at their workplace, but we can speculate that her clients enjoyed it more. So what was it that she did exactly for work? Yeah. What was her job title when she filed taxes? What did her day-to-day -day shift look like? <laughs> if only it was that easy. 
she handled her responsibilities behind closed doors, and there was an agreement between her, her clients, and her boss, Mr. Donner, not to speak of what happened behind said doors. Mm. In a way, these customers were paying for privacy. At the same Ow. time, and maybe more importantly, they were paying for Jackie. Jackie Barter was one of the primary reasons why Mr. Donner was a success. Sure, he had a knack for business, he knew how to operate in the shadows of anonymity. He knew how to turn a profit. But most importantly, he knew what his clients wanted. And what they wanted was Jackie. But what exactly did she do? What was she offering? Why did they want her? The tight-lipped Donner never made those easy questions to answer. However, what we do know is that she was in the service industry and she wasn't bringing food or drinks to her clients. Oh. Jackie Barter herself was enough for them. She brought her energy, her smile, her personality, her charm, and her glow. She dressed in a white dress and wore novelty bunny ears. The wardrobe never changed, it never had to. While customers came to Donner's establishment to mix things up from their normal lives, when they were there, they didn't want change. They wanted the same thing each time. They knew what they wanted, and it was Jackie Barter. Jackie Barter in a white dress and bunny ears. What she actually did, however, isn't as clear. But if you were to speculate, you'd likely come to some version of the truth. What yeah. is clear is who she did it for. A man who we will refer to as AF was her top client. AF managed the chemical plant a few blocks from the establishment. He had a wife, a high-income job, and had the means to live a good life. He had things going for him, everything he could ever want. But like any man built of vices, he wanted more. Mr. Donner's establishment was made for people like AF. It was a place where people could be influenced by the devil on their left shoulder and not be judged for it. It was a place for depravity detached from morality. It was a place where you didn't have to shape your behavior to the expectations of society, family, or friends more than that. I'm not really talking a lot this video because I'm quite intrigued what's going on. I probably will pause later on down the road and talk about what I think is going on. Clear. So you guys don't think I'm not like, but the microphone is working. <laughs> It was a place where people themselves didn't feel guilty for what they did. Mr. Donner created a place where people could act on their impulses, enjoy themselves, walk out, go home, and leave their shame at the door. AF loved every aspect of it. And so he became a local. He went frequently, and he always requested Jackie. Donner operated his business in a vague, mysterious building. The type of place you'd have to yelp three times before entering just to make sure you're at the right address. It looked abandoned, and yet, you could feel the life behind those doors. It pulled you in. Inside, there were rooms lined up like a hotel hallway. Behind one of those particular doors waited not just one man, but rather a crew of friends. AF always brought about three or four people with him. Why he brought them isn't understood. Did he feel safer in his sins when he shared with others? Or was it that he was trying to impress them? Or maybe he was up to no good and wanted to have the numbers on his side? Mm. What we do know is that whoever these men were, AF had an abundance of them. Each time he visited the establishment, he brought a different group of people with him. But the variance ended there. Because each time, his request was exactly the same. The woman dressed in white. He wanted Jackie and only Jackie. She was his preferred handler. The reasons for this aren't clear. It might be as simple as a man having a specific taste. They might have gotten along quite well. Or maybe there's more to it. Maybe he was up to something. Why he chose her, we don't know. But we do know he loved his time with Jackie. Little did he know his time with her was running out. Soon she would be someone or something entirely new. SCP-1903. Yes, please tell us what happened. Closed doors, we aren't sure. But don't let that stop you from speculating. After AF returned home, his wife went to Donar's establishment looking for information. No different than you are seeking information right now, listening closely, waiting for the next bomb to drop. 
only she wasn't at her computer. She was actively fighting for it. Donner, being a man dedicated to privacy, kept his mouth shut and sent her away. But AF's wife didn't give up. She knew something was off. And so she tracked Jackie down after hours. Unlike her confrontational encounter with Donner, she was able to ease into a friendly conversation with Ow, she she her she in. information out of her. Slowly, but surely, Jackie opened up and told her everything. She told her all about AF's late nights spent there at Donner's establishment and about the men he'd bring with them. More specifically, Jackie explained to her what happened the night in question, and whatever it was. It was enough for Jackie not to come in the next day, and in the days following, that's when everything changed for Jackie. Over the course of the next few days, she painfully morphed into what we see her to be now, SCP-1903. It started in her face. Nothing that wouldn't concern anyone at first glance, her cheeks turned slightly pink, but the symptoms wouldn't be overlooked for long. She developed claw-like hands and feet. The skin on her face turned into what looks like a paper mache styled rabbit mask. Her bunny ears no longer were just for show, but rather they are entirely responsible for her ability to hear. She began to produce mercury and blood through the pores of her hands and feet. No longer was she Jackie Barter. The Foundation what stepped happened? in and took her into their own custody and deemed her SCP-1903. This, however, did not come without consequence for the Foundation. The discovery of SCP-1903 and the knowledge obtained and passed along should not have been celebrated. But they didn't know this until the party had already started. And when the balloons began to pop, it was already too late. Let this be a lesson. Be careful of the secrets you tell. Unlike most curiosities, this one came at a cost no contestant on The Price is Right could ever have guessed. We are creatures who crave information. And so what exactly caused her to transform? Was it a chemical compound? Or was it just because she spilt the secret and she was being punished? That's what I'm wondering. Now we'll dig around until we get it. And once retrieved, it is instinct to hold it up and show it to the world. Mostly, this is innocuous. However, sometimes when someone spills the tea, we all get burned. And that is exactly what happened. SCP-1903 was discovered by the Foundation to harbor a slow-acting infohazard. The effects of this infohazard are triggered when the subject learns three important details of Jackie's story. Number one, AF's full name. Number two, AF's actions towards Jackie. And number three, Jackie's response to AF's actions. Sorry LeBron, Bosch, and Wade, but no big three in NBA history has ever been as powerful as this one. It is the catalyst for years of damage. If not guarded properly, it has the force to dismantle entire dynasties. As the Foundation spread this information throughout personnel, so spread the infection across the research team. Anyone who learned too much of the story was and will be afflicted. But what exactly what does happens? that look like? Well, subjects will begin showing symptoms of mercury poisoning, and large parts of the skin will flake off exclusively around the facial area two days after exposure to the trigger information. After five days, typically when the pigmentation of the affected area is pure white in color, the dermis will begin to form a protective layer of similar composition to SCP-1903's mask, with the exclusion of any traces of mercury. This layer will continue to form until it covers the oh. entire facial area and will eventually appear to resemble a paper mache animal mask of a similar fashion to SCP-1903's, which typically resembles rabbits, cats, wolves, foxes, and rats. They will go biologically huh. deaf, and they will only be able to hear if they continue to wear these ears. Over the course of this change, the hands and f It's like a curse. If you spill certain information, you get turned into this, and it's like a virus because they just keep spreading. Feet will undergo a well, depending on how much of the information is said. Pigmentation shift, darkening considerably. Their nails will sharpen, growing into claws over time, and the subject's hearing will transfer to the next set of novelty ears, which represent the animal that their masks resemble. Once subjects have found these ears, they will show reluctance to take them off. It is unclear if this is because they have built a bond with their identity 
or if it is simply the case of them trying to preserve their hearing. Furthermore, if a pair of ears becomes damaged to the point where repair without spare parts is impossible, the subject will become permanently deaf, and they will Ow. be left wishing their deafness had come sooner, saving them from hearing Jackie's secret, saving them from the curse that comes with it. Maybe they even wish to be mute too, because once an affected subject tells a non-affected subject about the trigger information, the normal subject will undergo the changes the affected subject went through up until that point, thus continuing this chain of unfortunate fate. Two to three days later, blood will begin to seep through the pores in the subject's hands, feet, and gums. Within a few hours, mercury will begin to appear in the subject's bloodstream. This does not physically affect the subject or other subjects in a similar state. However, it does severely affect the subject's mental health. Many afflicted subjects have been reported to go to extreme measures to remove the mask that has overtaken their face. Oh. AF was one of them. He sawed at it with a knife until his face was, well, faceless. Yeah. This means of infection by way of info hazard was most notably observed with researcher Hayward when he was reading Revision 2 of SCP-1903. By the time he finished, he saw SCP-1903 staring at him from across the cell through the observatory window. She was trying to warn him not to read it. She didn't say anything, but she shushed him. He pressed the button for a photograph and tried to talk to her through the intercom, but when he did, she just sat back down on her cot. He assumed that she realized he was reading her file and then tried to warn him not to tell anyone. I guess While it's the story too of late. SCP-1903 was going around infecting people and causing them intense physical and psychological pain, SCP-1903 herself was trying to save them from it. This is the tragic through line of the story. Jackie Barter spent her whole life making other people feel better. In most cases, this meant sacrificing her time and energy to do so. And her payment for these services wasn't fair. What did she get? She was sentenced to life under strict supervision, a life in pain, a life in a body that isn't her own. But this is often overlooked. The most documented and studied pain wasn't of SCP-1903s, but rather the personnel who were affected by her story. Oh. In fact, there are few documented records of how SCP-1903 itself feels. However, we have interviews with researcher Hayward explaining how he felt after being affected. And maybe, with time, as Hayward moves further and further away from his time as a normal human being, we will begin to disregard his pain too. In science, empathy often finds a way to elude us. With each new study, we move closer to an objective understanding, but at the cost of traveling further and further from its emotional yeah. makeup. Regarding Hayward, he initially felt fine after the affliction, but in a couple of hours, the affected area started to feel irritated. Nothing that couldn't be managed, though. He didn't think much of it until the second day. By then, it felt like he had spent the day on the beach staring up at the hot sun, but he remembers not having been in the sun at all that day. Even under a layer of clouds and low temperatures, the skin on his face felt to have been roasting as if in the oven. His face was slowly peeling off. If he tugged at the corner, he swore it would have ripped off like a band-aid. The pain and discomfort didn't end there. The testing for mercury wasn't much fun either for him. However, he was quite reluctant to go into details about how the procedure was done, similar to how your dad would respond if you asked him about his colonoscopy. Even now, yeah. Hayward's face is still tender. A gentle kiss on the cheek would feel like a pinch, but the worst pain wasn't physical. It was the mental games it played with his head. He experienced hallucinations. He started seeing them around the time he noticed that the mask finished growing. They blended with reality, and it took him time to start recognizing their onset. He could tell he was hallucinating if he focused on people's clothing, because in his hallucinations, their outfits would change until everyone was wearing a white tux or a white evening gown. The dresses would be classy, yet revealing similar to how the woman would dress at Donner's establishment. In fact, most everything in the hallucinations could be called back to Donner's. The people in the hallucinations would be wearing masks of different animal types, just like Jackie and her co-workers. Hayward said it looked like a masquerade where he was the center of attention. Everyone would turn their heads to face him. Even if their necks should have snapped, they'd turn a full 180, and they would just glare. 
These hallucinations huh. would last close to 30 seconds. And during that half... Like an invo involuntary uh, infection. Only she found out after uh, what happened to him. Like, like, it's like she didn't want it to happen exactly, but it just happened anyway because she spilled those secrets. Minute. One thing stood out specifically. There would be a man leaning against the wall, not wearing a mask. He was the only one who wasn't in stylish evening wear, so he kind of sticks out. He can't be made out clearly, but by studying the description, the Foundation believes it to be a vision of Donner. Could Donner be a more important piece to this story than we give him credit? The person trying hardest to silence the story must have the most skin in the game of secrets, right? Either way, we can all learn a lesson from Donner and keep quiet from time to time. I will say it again. Sometimes when someone spills the tea, we all get burned. Now yeah. go check out SCP-3887 Monster Under the Bed in the Horror of Body Stealing Rain, SCP-3300, for more haunt- Okay. That was actually um, probably one of the most intriguing SCPs I've come across in quite a long time. That was quite interesting. To get the understand- I don't even know what I'm saying at the moment. <laughs> but- it's like it's like you spill a secret, you get hurt by it, and feel like you betrayed someone. I feel like that was that's what was going on. Uh, she spilled the secrets, and she immediately paid for it, and in uh, consequently started making others pay for her mistake because she told them about those three things, and they started reading up on it, and just started getting hurt by it. That's what that's what it seems to have come down to, but. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction video. I know I did. Because I, I know I didn't talk a lot during this entire video. I was just intently listening and trying to get the understanding of, the, of SCP-1901. 1903, sorry. But I was just very curious and just wanted to hear the story. So hopefully you guys did, did enjoy my reaction. Because I was listening very intently there. So I will see you guys next reaction video that I do.